people killed by the virus to more than 2,000. Spain has recorded the fourth largest number of cases and has imposed a nationwide lockdown in response. Let's go live to Madrid and we can speak to Guy Hedgeko, our correspondent there. Um, Guy, just tell us more about these numbers. Well, it's continuing a trend that we've seen over the last few days, whereby the infections have continued to increase and accelerate, as have the deaths. You mentioned that figure of well over 400 more deaths in the last 24 hours. That was an increase um, on the, the weekend figure we saw, which was around 400 more deaths uh, from between Saturday and Sunday. So there's obviously enormous concern about that. Um, the number of, of deaths that we're seeing in Spain, which is relatively high compared to other countries, can at least partly be attributable to the fact that the coronavirus has been spreading through uh, retirement homes, where obviously you have a very vulnerable group in uh, the elderly population there. But also it's very much concentrated in certain areas of the country, particularly here in Madrid, which has seen well over half of the deaths so far. Um, and is, is there any more breakdown in terms of the age group? Is, is it mostly the elderly who are losing their lives? And also, do we know in terms of the time lag, was the lockdown imposed um, you know, two weeks ago? I, obviously, there's always a gap, isn't there, between how strict these clamping down measures are and then what happens to the population as a result? Yes, I mean, re regarding the, the age groups, so those who, who have uh, been killed by the virus, it's very much... Um, the over 60s, certainly. Um, people under the age of 60, there have been some deaths. There was a 52-year-old nurse from the Basque country uh, last week who died, but that's relatively unusual. Um, but it is very much older people, but also health professionals are being infected at quite a high rate. One in 10 of those who are infected are health professionals. Now, the lockdown began just over a week ago, the weekend before last. So it's been in place eight or nine days or so, the government says that it hopes to start seeing the benefits of that lockdown, which means you cannot leave your house at all unless you have a specific reason. It hopes to start seeing those benefits in the coming days. But at the same time, we're likely to see a continued increase in the number of infections and the number of deaths in the coming days as well, which is putting a lot of pressure on the health service. OK, Guy Hirschko, many thanks. While the pandemic is far from over, there is some positive news emerging from Germany. The number of confirmed cases is over 26,000 with 111 deaths. But the head of Germany's Public Health Institute says the number of new cases may be slowing down, the flattening of the curve, as some people describe it. Take a listen. We are we are seeing signs that the exponential growth curve is flattening off slightly, but I will only be able to confirm this trend definitively on Wednesday. But I am optimistic that the measures are already having an effect, which is very early because they have only been in place for a week. Gavin Lee is in Brussels. Just Gavin, just to pick up on those Germany figures, but in contrast to Spain, um, Germany was also credited with doing more testing, I think, quite early on, wasn't it? Yeah, well, the capacity in Germany is quite incredible, actually, comparatively to the rest of Europe. They're able to test up to 160,000 people a day, and that was one of the, the reasons. There are suggested to be several why the death toll is so comparatively low. 106 people in Germany with um, more than 26,000 cases, when you've seen you know, Italy, for example, 60,000 cases, 5,500 people um, dead of coronavirus. Um, being the fact that people have tested so thoroughly, so quickly in Germany, they've managed to get the virus testing kits out to a lot of people. And also, you know, Germany is famed for its standard of health care in, in Europe and we're starting to see that. Like the health um, the head of the, the health service in Germany just said, though, that they are still not sure. It's a cautious optimism as to whether the curve will start to go down because Germany, I think, is the, the sixth highest level in the world now in terms of coronavirus cases. And, of course, we now know that their chancellor, 64-year-old Angela Merkel, is among those now in quarantine. After her vaccinations doctor, she had a flu jab on Friday. The doctor has coronavirus, so she is in, in isolation. Let's look at, as well at some of the other countries. Guy was talking about Spain, but Italy for a moment. I mean, the case is there. There's been a similar small note of, of optimism um, by the, the government. They're saying that whilst the rise over the weekend was terrifying in terms of the deaths, five and a half thousand deaths, a thousand of those at the weekend, the curve, that trajectory of cases per day, went down to 9%. So they are hoping there 
that that curve slows. With Giuseppe Conte, the Prime Minister, say, says this is the key week. They've closed down all non-essential businesses. So that will have a massive effect on, on the economy, of course, Gita, up until the 3rd of April there too. I, I mentioned as well, for a country and sort of a region we haven't mentioned as much about, the Baltics and Estonia. Most of those countries, uh, Lithuania, Latvia, Finland, for example, have all closed the borders now to non-residents. Over the weekend, the Finnish said... Uh, to the Estonians, there are 20,000 who commute by ferry uh, each week, said, pick a side, you either stay in Finland or stay in Estonia. And so 20,000 people have decided, roughly, decided to stay in Estonia, cannot get across to work in Finland. The case is there about 356, way higher than Lithuania and Latvia. Part of the reason there is a, an island called Sanama, it's the biggest Estonian island, where a volleyball team from Milan played there two weeks ago. It is now seen as the hot spot in Estonia and the island is in complete quarantine. And I, I don't want to ask you uh, to speculate outside what we know, but obviously, for example, the UK is looking at being behind uh, two weeks behind Italy. From what you can see across Europe, does it look like you put lockdown measures in and then you do get the results about two weeks later? I, I mean, we're still waiting to see if that's the case. I mean, look at Spain and Italy, the highest cases, uh, still frightening levels. Of, of deaths and still frightening levels of, of cases rising. We're not seeing anything clear either in, in France as well. They've probably had a bit less time. Um, we're talking about um, 16,000 cases in France now, more than 1,000 deaths there. And the enforcement, just to give a sense of what might be coming in the UK if the domino effect continues in terms of the measures as it has a week or so behind, there have been uh, more than 100,000 French police uh, in car, uh, by helicopter, using drones as well, and in Belgium with messages to stay apart or stay in, there have been 90,000 penalty fines for people breaching um, those orders, people being caught uh, on benches, eating food, pastries in one circumstance, eating, uh, drinking beers outside cafes. You know, this is a real strict enforcement now. People in France being told you cannot leave uh, your area 